headed to UConn. Um, Castle, 6'6", six, six, combo, combo guard. Yeah. Um, I, I kind of look at him as more of a lead ball handler, but I think he's going to be capable of playing off the ball. Um, I like Castle a lot. <laughs> Same. <laughs> I like him a lot. Um, I have Castle uh, top three right now. Okay. And uh, he, from, he's right there with Middleton. He certainly has stuff he's got to work on. But I, again, like in this class, um, with where I'm at um, in my film stuff, this is a guy who I think is really intriguing going to the defending champions, getting to play with a guy like Klingon um, and, you know, some of the shooters they have, Cam Spencer, Alex Caravan, like it's he has an opportunity, I think, to really make a name for himself and cement himself as, you know, a top five, top 10 guy. Uh, there is a little bit of that uh case in Wallace kind of boring to him, you know, where he just like plays at his own pace, <laughs> never gets sped up, yeah. you know, just always kind of, again, another one of these guys, not like super, super flashy, but like just really effective. So, uh, but I really like him, man. Where do you want to start with him? Um, <clears throat> hmm. Okay. So with castle, the first thing that I wrote Corey was that, um, He's one of these guys that, like, growing up, he saw, like, really smooth ballers and was like, I wanted to grow up and do that. But then now, like, that's, like, his whole game where he's, <laughs> like, so into being smooth and making his game look cool that it's, like, like it, that it seems like he's always just doing that. Um, but I love it. I love it. Like, I love what you said. Like, he always plays at his own pace. What I wrote in my notes, never seems to be going too fast. Ever. Like it mm. just, he knows exactly how he wants to play the game. And even when he's going fast, it doesn't feel too fast because he has this like weird, unique ability to do that. Um, loved his footwork in, uh, in, in the paint, but okay. Where should we start? I, um, I like the passing stuff, dude. Um, with his size and, mm. uh, yeah, his vision. I, I liked it a lot. Yeah. Uh, agreed. And that's why I think, you know, I, I prefer him to kind of be like a lead mm -hmm. ball handler, um, just that grab and go. Look at this hit ahead. Yeah, God. Alley oop, hit ahead. <laughs> Sick. <laughs> Fudge, man. I I I miss this. This is I'm, now. I'm feeling like we're back. God damn. Half court. That's a dime, man. That'll get you going in the morning. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Look, there. I mean, very Lonzo Lamelo ball esque. Yeah. You know, um, with that. But that it's. Psh, that's a big time play in transition. Um, he's got it in the half court too. Uh, you know, when I saw this, I was like, Oh, okay. Like he's, <laughs> this is the full gamut of the vision, like self create oh, God. on the money <laughs> corner hit to the weak side. Like, but they big... look Corey, even on this one, the size shines, man. Like yep. he's, he could see over the defender. No problem, dude. It's got two on me. Bam. Yep. What a laser beam. Help rotates over. It doesn't matter because he could see over. And this is kind of, you know, obviously the opposite of Cadeau where it's like, you know, he's got to win with speed and IQ and pace. And like uh, Castle's just, he almost always looks like he's in slow motion. Yeah. You know, like, and and that size and his strength is, is going to be a real asset. I think size and strength is one of the, most under like strength at least is is what i think mm. is like one of the most under talked about scouting points in the community nice little snug pick and roll play you know to the to the roller here uh and you know he's got a good frame that's gonna fill out and that size and strength that that i think is what we've seen allows guys to really um like contribute early you know, that's why Scoot's going to be so good early on because he could physically handle. It's why Brandon Miller, as much as I love him, he might not be as effective at certain things early on because he, you know, that that strength isn't there yet. Um, and that's something that you got to be patient with with certain prospects. But when you can get a guy who can come in and contribute right away, you know, you have your Josh Giddies who has that size and that frame, you know, to, to come in and be effective right away. I think Castle... Obviously not as tall as a guy like Giddy, but he has enough size, strength, um, potential, and frame that I, I think he's going to be a guy who is really going to be fun to watch. I mean, like we've been saying, Corey, like 
this game with that size on that team wearing the cool UConn jerseys, mm. this is going to be something to watch, man. Like the him. Garden. Running, oh, God. I can already see it, dude. He's going to have some ESPN moments this season. We're playing with Klingon, dude. And, and everything we're hearing about Klingon right now, how he's beefing up and getting stronger, getting ready for the new season, supposedly added, what, 20, 25 pounds. That's a lot of pounds. God, that's I, don't know of, if, I don't know if they're good pounds or not. That's true. <laughs> that sounds like a lot of poundage. Um, but, um, you know, we'll see. But if it's good pounds, right, with a guy <laughs> like Castle, and as you mentioned, the shooting that they have with Caravan, and others like it's you you can't help but get excited man and, and once again like i just want to touch on like even on this pass like the the on time on target stuff with him and cadeau is really fun and exciting yeah. to watch and and that's why with, for me on my board right now once again my board is in shambles and it's just names but i do have him and cadeau bunched up together i like both of them almost equally right now but you know as we're talking this out like it makes sense to probably have Castle higher simply because of the size and strength combination that you're talking about. Just look, it's he's looking over all of these guys. He's got clear vision of the whole floor being six foot six. That's great size for a lead ball handler, point guard ish guy, you know? So I'm right there with you, Corey. And the thing with, you know, even after the passing stuff, we'll get into like some of the scoring stuff, but you know, that size continues to translate the smooth um, footwork and stuff that he has, is really fun to watch. So I, I get it, man. He, he's, he's, he's great. Yeah. And, you know, I think you could envision him throwing this pass to uh, Klingon. Yes. You, know, it, uh, you touched on it. His ball placement on passes. I really like, like he's, he throws to space. He leads guys. Um, he could see over. He had, he trusts his big, that's a big thing with, with young guards is like having the trust to throw difficult passes, knowing that like they might not fully expect it mm -hmm. um that's a hard pass it's there's three defenders right there and he, he squeezes it in and uh you know i i like that kind of stuff now not like the most knockdown shooter you're yeah. ever gonna find um but i think he's a capable capable three-point shooter and for me, that's solid enough to work with. I mean, that is a, a tough. That's a nice one. Sm that's smooth, man. Yeah. Like, like he has, he could put together these combo moves. And again, he's never sped up, you know, like it's, it's pace. He's setting guys up. He's making them work at his speed. And he's confidently knocking down a tough off the bounce jumper against Duncanville, you know, one of the better high school teams. Um, he almost reminds me a little bit in the way that he gets his offense to like shade and sharp. Mm -hmm. um, he's not as bouncy. I, yeah. I don't want to, I don't want to, you know, give the impression that, that he could jump like Shaden, but when he like Shaden is such a smooth, yeah. um, like offensive talent. And, and I think he's got more scoring chops than castle does, um, you know, because of, you know, the, um, the athleticism difference. And I just think there's, you know, the shot is smoother. But there's something there with with Castle offensively as a a, a scorer as well. No, I'm with you, man. I, I think especially in the in the clips that you're playing right here, you can start to see it. Um, I, I did notice though, Corey, on like deeper threes, he's doing some stuff with his feet. Mm -hmm. um, I thought that was just him kind of getting acclimated to the deeper range, him having to kind of muster some extra power there. Um, that you know with more reps and him continuing to strengthen, strengthen his lower half and his, his, his core. I think that'll come a little bit easier, but I, I'm with you, dude. I, I think right now uh, he, I wouldn't say that he's like a knockdown shooter, a very good shooter even, but you can see, uh, you know, some hints of him becoming a good one. And um, if he's going to continue to be this smooth and uh, that much of a threat with his passing, then you can, start to see him you know slowly developing in this area as well and you know that becoming a bit of a more of a weapon i think right now i think i'm a little bit more uh confident in Cadeau's shooting than castles but that doesn't mean that i think castle's not going to be a good shooter um and once again with him being six foot six like that's um that's definitely a, a benefit for him yeah no i i think Cadeau's a smoother shooter yeah. um but with Castle, I I just think that he has to 
like he's a good enough shooter mm-hmm. that um just the threat of of his offense is enough that like you still have to guard it you know and look there's definitely some some shots that you go oh all right yeah. like he's he's not like right there right like he's he's got some stuff um and because he's not super bursty you know because he's he plays at his own pace sometimes like when he doesn't get enough separation you know he could throw up some stuff that you're like ooh all right like <laughs> let's get that one back <laughs> mm-hmm. you know what i mean like this one iso squaring up uh through the legs a whole bunch of dribble sidestep and off the side of the backboard so he has some stuff to work out as a three point shooter um but i also like that he's got you know the mid range pull up to his game yep. and i think he's a potential three level scorer i think all of these guys have the potential to to score yes. at three levels um which is good because we're talking about guys that we all have <laughs> ranked in our top 10 right now <laughs> um but you know with castle I, I think it's gonna be really important um because of the pace that he plays and he's not super bursty and, and twitchy but just allows his size and his shot making and uh he's got that iso pick and roll whatever it is and, and for me from a pick and roll ball handler it's why i think like chris paul has been so effective and still is able to be uh super effective i think being able to get to like the elbow out of a ball screen and knock down a mid-range jumper is one of the more underrated skills that young high school players like don't have in their bag um like for guards who who play in the pick and roll because when you're able to knock down that little shot and guys are going over um you know, and let's say the big's in a drop, like you're, you're able to hit that shot efficiently. Now, like the big has to come up and play you, right? Like he's got to play you a little bit higher up. um, And then that allows the roller to, you know, get a free lane to the rim. And if the low man is there, that means that you're going to have options open in the corners. So like, or on the wing off of one more. So like, I think it's such a huge shot. And, you know, it's something that I, I think Castle really uh, has the potential to develop. I'm with you, man. I, I think it just looks a lot smoother than the mid range. Um, mm. I, I think you see it in the feet. Um, it, it's it's not he's not doing that thing where like his feet have to like come together at the end of it because you know he's trying to muster that extra strength. It looks very much within his range when he's taking these shots from the mid range. And as we've mentioned throughout, like the smoothness is what's helping him. Um, not the burstiest guy, but because of the pace that he plays with, he creates enough separation for himself in that area. And then once again, you know, at six six, you start to have <clears throat> more opportunities to hit this shot. So I'm right there with you, man. And with everything that you said, all right, leveraging all that and having that in your bag, the d- different opportunities that he could then create with his unbelievable passing um, ability, you start to get excited. So I'm right there with you. And then, you know, off of this, when he starts getting to the, I wanted to ask how you felt about, you know, him attacking the rim. Cause I felt he's got some real good stuff going to the rim as well with his footwork and that like over the head snatch stuff. But yeah, I, I really like him as a finisher. Yeah. Uh, the numbers don't necessarily bear it out as much as like you would want mm-hmm. them to. Um, but I like how physical he is yes. as a finisher. Like he's going through Ron Holland now. Like Ron Holland is for a lot of people is the number one prospect in this <clears throat> draft. Uh, he's somebody you liked a lot when we saw him live at, at Hoop Summit. And he's just kind of pushing him around like big boy. You know, like <laughs> he, Holland can't stop uh, and he's not going fast. There's not a lot of momentum. He's got him pinned, you know, pretty far away and just pace. And then like, let me just push him out of the way, finish through and one. Um, so there's a lot to like. Now, the numbers say from, you know, per synergy um, on the Under Armour circuit, he finished 46 percent in the half court. So like, obviously, there are times when the finishing kind of doesn't work when he can't really use that physicality to its full advantage. Uh, we'll see an example uh, of that on, on this possession where it ultimately, you know, he doesn't have a ton. He, he makes a nice little move, but somebody's in the pain. He just kind of throws up yeah. some junk. Yeah. Um, so I think eliminating some of this stuff, like he misses the read here. He forces that up. And if we pause it um, as he gets a, a paint touch, Mm -hmm. he's got that corner shooter you know and like instead he tries to get into the paint draw some contact 
so I, I think, you know, and it goes back to like, he's not a perfect passer. Like that's a pass Cadeau makes, mm-hmm. but he missed it. So there's definitely some times where like, all right, he's, he's got some work to do on the reads, but as far as the finishing goes again, I, I think he's smooth. I think he's skilled. I think he's tough. And they're all traits that I think are going to allow him to be a good finisher here. Yeah. Crafty little footwork there, yeah. Yeah. you know, with the kind of like reverse Euro mm-hmm. um, to get him to the rim and the little hang has he. Whoop. Yeah. A yeah. slick. He loves himself a Euro. He loves himself a over the head snatch. Yeah. Um, he's really good at it. And as you know, he knows how to leverage that size to make this even more effective and create more separation. But, you know, he is going to go against better interior defenders, stronger, faster guys. So it is going to be interesting to see him continue to develop in this as well. And Corey, what that position before that you showed where he missed that strong side corner, that's the, that's the Cadeau to, to, to car pass every single time. Was, mm-hmm. He was so freaking good at that. But I'm with you, man. I, I think there's so much to like about Castle here. Um, and once again, I think the context is going to be unbelievable where he's playing and the opportunities that he's going to get. And I, I feel like there's not going to be as much pressure on him either because of you know the wealth of talent they have on that team. And cl- all, all eyes will be on Klingon as well. So, um, yeah, man, he, I'm excited. Yep. Uh, I agree. He's, he's going to be really interesting to watch. And, you know, even here going up, finishing gets into the body, finishing against length. He snakes the ball screen. He wins with pace. There's not a ton of vertical pop, um, at all times. And that's something that, you know, you think might be able to hurt him, but he wins with just skill pace and the guys that he's going to be able to play off of, um, I think when they get in the film room and you go back to that possession where he missed the shooter, like Cam Spencer's in that corner. Like Mm -hmm. when they get in film, they'd be like, Hey, you can't miss this pass because that's, (laughs) that's a layup, (laughs) you know, like, uh, your caravans in that corner, like, Hey, open shot, nobody 10 feet. That's a layup and he'll learn. Um, but I think he's super intriguing. I think his game is, is really fun. And, um, I have him top three right now just because I think he's another guy like you're not going to be able to pick on him defensively. Yeah, I'm interested to see how he um, holds up on that end early on in the season. Obviously, having a guy like Klingon to back you up allows you to take chances that you might not normally take, be physical in a lot of ways. Their their depth there allows that. Uh, but I think UConn's going to be right back in the mix this year. They're going to be a lot of fun. He's going to be a big reason why. Yeah. Yeah, he um, he's fun. And just like off of what you were saying before, Corey, very slithery. He's really good at that stuff, man. Just like getting to where he needs to get to without running through walls and stuff. Like I just love watching that type of finesse um, and that type of skill. So I'm excited.